Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here this early. Uh, I'm Arne. I'm a lecturer in security engineering at the Hansen University of Applied Sciences in the Netherlands. And what I'll be talking about is how we might be able to use threat modeling for improving or to, to help improve the security of software. Because currently, if we compare the security of software with the security, of, or at least the safety of, for example, um, air travel or elevators, then there's quite a well, difference to uh, put it mildly. Now, of course, safety and security are not exactly the same thing. Uh, with safety, we're interested in protecting our infrastructure against the elements. Right? Now, with security, we want to protect our infrastructure against Godzilla, or attackers. Right? Intelligence, usually, at least we can assume, uh, at least part of the time, intelligence, trying to uh, get around our defenses. So, of course, as developers, we can then ask, are we doomed? Right? Can, we, can we actually protect ourselves? And if we take the approach of uh, penetrate and patch, so after we've shipped a product, looking for vulnerabilities and patching them, I think we are doomed. Well, Another approach has been proposed. It's got, uh, it goes under different names, security by design, building security in, or uh, shifting security left. Now, the idea is to integrate security into the development lifecycle early on. And that can be in the form of approach. Now, if you want to start applying this, where do you start, right? Which, which activity is then the most important? Now, if we follow Howard uh, and Lipner, they say that if they had to choose, they choose for threat modeling any day, every day of the week. Right? Now, what is threat modeling? Threat modeling, it's got, um, well, the term is used in, for, for two different things. Um, one thing more related to requirements engineering and the other thing more related to uh, analyzing the architecture against security threats. So the one related to requirements engineering is the thing related to when people ask, what's your threat model, right? What are your security assumptions? And to give you one example, uh, this is a paper, a classic paper by uh, Dolev and Yao. And the model that they, pro uh, they propose is the following. They assume about a saboteur or an attacker that the attacker can obtain any message, initiate any conversation, and be a receiver to any user for any message. Now, this is a threat model which assumes an, an omnipotent attacker right, who can listen on, li listen, uh, on the uh, ether to any uh, message. Now, this, mess uh, this image should be familiar to you. Right? This is the model of the NSA intercepting any communication and also injecting any communication. The other approach of architectural analysis can take place later in the, um, so, so during design, or actually uh, once a design has been built, analyzing whether there are any uh, possible problems. And the question that we then ask ourselves is what could possibly go wrong. And this is, by, by asking ourselves this question, we can, before we write a single line of code, we can already start thinking through possible security problems. And we can also think of like how might it then go wrong. There's different types of threat models, at least different, three different classes. Um, the ones that focus more on uh, looking at the different types of attackers and their capabilities one's looking more at uh, which assets are important to protect and methods looking at what is the structure of our system and sketching that out. So for the attacker-centric approach, uh, we want to look at uh, who are our attackers, we want to look at their methodologies, their motivations, 
And one approach to map out, um, like to, to take an attacker um, perspective when threat modeling is uh, kill chains. And this is an example of uh, one, like a general uh, kill chain model, right? It, it models how can an attacker get initial access, uh, how can they go through the network, and what can they, like, what are their um, objectives. Another approach is looking at our assets, specifically the key assets. What do we really want to protect? Uh, and one approach there is to, for example, sketch an access control matrix, uh, looking at what are our assets, what are the different actors within um, our system, and what are the uh, possible permissions. Now, the approach that I'll look at in more detail are, uh, is the system-centric approach. Yeah, what, we do, what we do there is we sketch an approach to threat modeling, Sorry, which, uh, like a, um, so, so we sketch a view of the system, and this view, it, it can take, can take different forms. But, so this is what we'll look at in more detail. Some approaches that, some specific uh, system-centric threat modeling approaches are Stride, Trike, and uh, Pasta. Now, the one we'll look at in more detail is the stride approach. And four questions can guide us when we're doing system-centric threat modeling. And these are the, the phases that we can go through when we are carrying out a threat model or an architectural risk assessment. Firstly, what's our system? Right? We want we want to get an idea of what we're actually analyzing. Then, what can go wrong? Right? What, are, what are possible um, problems within that system that we've sketched? Then, once we have a good view of that, what are, we, what are possible security controls? Right? What, can, what can we actually do about it? And finally, looking back, have we done the right things? So a lightweight methodology that you can apply going through these uh, four steps, I'll, um, I'll walk you through the, uh, the one at a time. Firstly, data flow diagram. So, dia so sketching the data flows within a system. Uh, there are, of course, many different ways to sketch a system, but data flow diagrams tend to be the one used when uh, threat modeling. Suppose this is our, our system, right? A, a general sketch of the headquarters of a, an anonymous organization. Now, there's many different types of threats here. Someone can, can break in, uh, steal a server. But what we're interested in from a software perspective are, is the, the bottom part of, uh, so, so all the things related to uh, like web server, firewall, et cetera. Now, what we, can, what we can do is we can abstract away from, like this array and abstraction, but we can further abstract that um, to focus on uh, so the uh, data flow diagrams. And these have a standard, so these allow us to sketch data at rest, data in motion, or data being processed. So besides, so, so this is one, uh, one data flow diagram. We can also diagram different levels of the system, starting from our context diagram, who are uh, our external entities, going through, and then going in more, more detail. And especially, we can also look at, um, for the, in, in this case, this is a uh, web application, and we... Uh, we have uh, deconstructed that into the login process and the authenticated operations. And then we can, if we want to analyze the login process in more detail, then we can, we can do so and draw more data flow diagrams of that. Now, these data flow diagrams, uh, we can also label the data flows with how <coughs> data gets transferred from point A to point B, right, over what protocol and what type of data is being transferred. 
Now, once we have this picture of our system, this, this abstraction, we can think through, we can, we can uh, work on the next step, which is to th think through the possible problems that can happen. And this is also called threat elicitation. So to take one step back, if we look at security, then there, there tends to be uh, three goals that we want to achieve, confidentiality, confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information. And we usually do that through applying authentication, authorization, and accountability controls. So if we, were, if we then want to think of what can possibly go wrong, we can invert these. We can, uh, so to harm or to, to affect the confidentiality of uh, information within our system, we can perform attacks related to information disclosure. And to harm integrity of data, we can tamper information. Right, so for each of these six uh, classes of, of these, each of these six goals that we have, we have a uh, class of threats. Now, if we take the first letter of each of these six, then we get the acronym STRIDE. Okay? Spoofing, tampering, repudiation, information disclosure, denial of service, and elevation of privilege threats. So what we do is for each element of our diagram, we can identify whether there is threats related to one of the uh, stride classes. So here's an example. Here we see that uh, the browser client might be spoofed, so someone can uh, impersonate someone else. And also the same goes for the web application. Now, here we have a sketch of um, the architecture of the Swiss, the, the Swiss payment network. And we can already see what, for example, uh, in the, the Bank of Bangladesh, I think it was, what went wrong there. Uh, we, can, we see that the end user, the end user computer, is connected to the internet and also connected to internal Swift, the internal Swift network. So we can, by brainstorming, by eliciting threats, we can already identify possible problems. Right? We can, um, the end user computer might be exploited through an elevation of privilege attack. Here's another example. This is a, a one-time token authentication solution. And by going through, so by sketching this uh, representation of the system, and by going through every so by going through the S for spoofing, well, can, is, there possible, is there spoofing uh, possible anywhere? Well, um, we, could, we could think of, can, can someone, uh, yeah, so, so spoofing, we, we, go, we go through all the elements and think of, well, is, is this threat possible? For example, uh, information disclosure. Is information disclosure possible? Well, we could, uh, we could think of, the one-time token that's being transmitted, or what are all the places where we can intercept that token? Now, once we've done, we've got a whole bunch of, um, of threats, we can think of ranking them. We can think of what are, what are the relevant and the less relevant threats to address. So how, how do we actually rank these threats? Right? We've got a whole, a whole bunch of, of threats, and which are, which are the most important, which are less important? Right? What's, our, what's, for example, our top three? Now, the answer to that is looking at risk. Not, not this risk, but the risk uh, concepts being the combination of likelihood and impact. And one approach can be mapping risk from, so having uh, the possible, so the likelihood or the estimated time until a threat um, actually impacts the system, and then the amount of impact. And you can imagine that we want to focus our attention on the threats that are likely to happen, to occur um, often, so soon, and also on those that have a big impact on 
um, our system. Another approach besides that, that can help us with uh, prioritizing threats is so decision trees. This is an example for an elevation of privilege uh, related threats. We can identify does it impact the server or the client? Um, is it local or remote? To what extent do users need to authenticate or not? Right? This can help us in, um, in, in, in our prioritization. Lastly, so once we've, once we've sketched our system, once we've elicited threats through applying stride, and once we've ranked um, these threats to identify the most important ones, we need to know, have we done the right thing? Of course, uh, as George Box states, all models are wrong and some models are useful. So we could say like, well, at least if, if the model is useful to us, then why, why check whether it's correct? And if, if they're all wrong, then yeah. Why, why do this? Well, some models are more useful than others, so if we can improve that usefulness, that's handy. One way to check whether our model is correct is to check whether the uh, higher level data flow diagrams, whether they are matched to the lower level ones. I do, do data flows that occur in our context diagram, do they also occur in the, the level zero and the level one um, data flow diagrams. Another approach is to check have we, do we have all, have, have we covered our complete attack surface? Right? Have we looked at all the different ways of accessing our system? Because they, those data flows should be present in our threat model. Of course, we can also make use of um, CAN's lists of top 10. Um, possible vulnerabilities to see if we have we have those included in our analysis and what can also help is uh, threat trees or actually threat tree templates this is an example for the denial of service attack against a data flow uh, we can check if we thought about for example um, corrupting the message we can think about whether uh, we thought about uh, for example um, making the channel, um, so uh, incapacitating the channel, right? So we can, we can check if we've, if we've covered all these threats. And of course, this checking whether we've done a good job, that doesn't, that doesn't end once you've done threat modeling once. Right? Systems, they change, so we also need to keep thinking if, we need to keep checking if our um, threat models are still up to date. So that's a, a lightweight methodology for threat modeling, a lightweight approach for looking at, for going through the architecture of a system and thinking through possible problems. One thing that's very important when, when threat modeling is to do that with a team, right? to, to involve not just developers, but also, uh, also users or, or proxies for, for users and to, to, to take different perspectives. And to, to do that, what, what helps, what really helps is to you know, do this on paper, do this collaboratively, do it on a whiteboard. For example, uh, this is the, the, the vulnerable application juice shop. And this is the, a uh, quite high level data flow diagram for juice shop. So we can, we can sketch this on a whiteboard relatively easily just to, with, with markers. And we can then, with post-its, identify where are our key assets. Right, so uh, personally identifiable information might be stored in the SQL database. Um, there's money um, involved with the whole payment service. And then we can think through on different post-its what might be possible uh, protections, right? what, what might be possible controls. So you could think of um, no, oh, sorry, like what, what, what are possible threats? And then we can think of possible controls um, against those threats. And this is what it tends to look like. And the idea is that especially by, by doing this early, by doing this collaboratively, you can um, address security early on in the development life cycle. Of course, threat modeling is not 
everything there is. There's many other um, aspects to address. Right? There's many different activities within um, the security development lifecycle. And whatever you might think of Microsoft, uh, they do have a, a quite nice book that they've made uh, freely available. It's, it is from 2006, but the sections on threat modeling are still uh, relevant. And an interesting exercise that I'd recommend um, those interested uh, to do is to take any IoT application and to think through the possible threats to that IoT application. One example being a, a smart washing machine connected to the cloud, connected to a smartphone. Like, ask yourself the question, what could possibly go wrong? Right? And, and try to apply this also to your own development process. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Where did you start? <laughs> yes. At the beginning. <laughs> Can you please try to report the question? Oh, uh, the question was, where do you start? So that's a broad question, but generally you start, you start at the beginning, and uh, the idea is you, you start sketching, sketching the, the application from the perspective of who interfaces with the application, right? So you start sketching your context diagram, um, and from there you think, what are the possible, uh, yeah, possible things that can go wrong? Sorry? Uh, top down, yeah. Generally, so, so yeah, generally top down. But you can also um, you can start from you can also start with with like subsystems, and then you can combine the threat models of the different subsystems. 